All right, now that the oil is loaded in the processor, the next step is to heat it up. You see on the outlet of the hot water tank here, I have a temperature gauge. It just slides in, there's a little brass fitting there that is made for this purpose. You can see that cold oil is just below 50 degrees Fahrenheit right now. This is a dual element water tank but it's only running the lower element down here. Okay, because the oil is sitting around here and the element is up here, the second element. So it just runs the one element in the bottom. It's a 240 volt element running on 120 volts. Now I've tried operating 120 volt elements in here and I find that they just don't last. They burn out real quick. They get, I guess they get too hot too quickly or something. But running the 240 volt electric element, which is what the unit came with originally, but running it on, I don't have 240 volts, but running it on uh, just 120 volts, I find that the element life is very long. This element has been in here for years. So 240 volt elements, the big element running on 120 volts. It's a little bit slow at heating the oil, but it works and it's consistent. So I've run the element through this manual switch here. Just turn it on and we'll let that oil heat. Now I've set the thermostat to stop heating at around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You want the oil at at least 135, but no higher than about 145 or so, or else some of the things that we put in the oil to react the biodiesel will start to boil and evaporate. Methanol, methanol boiling point is, is uh, around that 150 mark. but you need at least 135 to make the reaction. So I go to 140, which gives a little bit of extra heat to ensure that you have the heat for the reaction while keeping it low enough to avoid boiling methanol. Boiling and evaporating methanol is not a good idea because then you can have methanol vapors that can cause all sorts of problems. You can imagine methanol vapors and a spark don't work well together. So this is going to take a couple of hours to heat up to our 140 degrees. Okay, the heater's been on for a couple hours. Uh, you can see the temperature's coming up there. Now, there's no oil flowing, so that's the temperature kind of at the bottom of the tank without any any flow of oil. So let's open up this valve, and then the top valve's open there. And then let's turn the pump on and get some oil flowing through the system and see what the real temperature of the oil is because I suspect the oil in the middle here is a bit warmer. Let's turn it on. You can see the oil's flowing up and back down. And we should see that warm oil coming through. Uh, yeah, it's warm. pretty close. Looks like it's leveling off there. So just about 140. It's a touch under 140. Uh, maybe it's coming up a bit more. 140. So that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so now that the oil is at 140 degrees, let me shut the machine off. See that oil settle back down. Okay. 
Now we're ready to do the reaction and make biodiesel. All right, now the chemical that's used to force the reaction of the vegetable oil and separate it out into biodiesel and glycerin and other byproducts is two things. One, uh, methanol or methyl alcohol, okay, and a catalyst, this one being flake potassium hydroxide or KOH. There's other catalysts that you can use like NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, drain cleaner basically. KOH has some advantages. I'm not going to get into the chemistry, but you need a catalyst and you mix the catalyst with the methanol. And you need a certain amount of catalyst and a certain amount of methanol. You need methanol at 20% of your oil volume. So we're doing 100 liters. This is exactly 20 liters of methanol. There are formulas to calculate how much catalyst you need based on based on uh, the quality of the oil, among other things. I've done all that math. Again, I'm not going to get into the chemistry. There's other articles uh, about that, but this is the measured amount that I need to dissolve into the methanol. So we'll go ahead and dissolve that now. I don't recommend anybody does this. This is a science experiment. I'm inviting you to join me. But this is not a recommendation to do this. All right. Oops. Mix it up. This stuff dissolves fairly easily. And once dissolved, we are ready to add it into the mix. So it's actually a gas valve which I've threaded and sealed into this cap with a little 90 degree hose barb here on off. So what we do is we replace the OEM cap with this and I've even made it so that when it's tight and sealed it's pointing down. Okay that's closed. Keep that closed for now. All right, I've changed the angle of the camera a little bit here just to give a better better view. Give a little more room. I'm just going to use this wood block to support the jug. Um, sometimes I use these, but it's a little tight in here. So just for the purpose of having a little more room, let's make sure our everything's closed up here and tight. Put that hose up here just so we can kind of tilt down and set it on top of that inlet valve right there or that inlet nipple push it down on okay now once we've got that now we're ready to process so uh, you want to make I want to make sure that my heat source is off on the processor tank because you don't want to be introducing this methanol onto a hot heating element so the switch is off there and the next step really is to open up the valve here that will allow the catalyst in to the mix so we'll open up this valve here we'll open up our valve here on the tank 
on the jug, open up this valve here, and then turn the processor on and allow the catalyst solution to be drawn into the machine, into the pump, and mixed with our oil mixture. The outlet, similar to when we filled the raw oil, should be slightly closed, otherwise there's too much flow coming through here. But if you slow it, close it slightly, then there's a little bit more vacuum from our jug and our catalyst will get drawn out into the system. Okay, let's try it. Uh, again, elements off up top there. Uh, all the valves that need to be closed are closed. Obviously, uh, we will open up this one. And let's get the processor running. Again. Open up this to let some air in. And begin introducing our catalyst. And for a few minutes we'll see the level of this going down until we've introduced all the catalysts into the machine. Now you can see over here the color going up has lightened quite a bit because we have that catalyst mixing with the oil so it's kind of a milky yellow color. And our level's going down. So we'll introduce all the catalysts and then talk about the next steps. Get it all emptied out here. It's getting toward the end. All right. So once it's all in there, I think this jug's pretty well empty. We'll shut our valve so nothing can come out. And we'll open this baby back up so we got full flow. And now we'll let the pump run. Now we're going to mix it. We just keep letting it run and run and run for about an hour or maybe two, some people say. Temperature's holding pretty steady at 140, a little bit above. So we'll let the machine run for an hour or so and then shut it down and let it settle. Okay, the mixture has been sitting for a couple of days. You need to let it sit at least overnight so that the glycerin, which is, becomes heavier, splits out and settles out of the oil as part of the reaction that, ha that occurred, leaving the biodiesel on top. Now, you can see this. This is just a jug of mixture of there's some glycerin and some biodiesel in there. You can see how the, I don't know if you can see in the light there, the biodiesel is the light stuff sitting on top, and then there's the dark glycerin that sits on the bottom. It's heavier. So that's what the inside of the tank looks like right now. Um, if you could see, you've got about 20 liters of glycerin sitting in the bottom of the tank and then the good biodiesel is on top. So the next step is to drain off of our bottom low point here on the system. We'll drain the bottom part of the tank which is the glycerin out here. Uh, just use an old jug here. Take this out of there. And we'll open up this and you'll see 
dark, it almost looks black. That's glycerin. And if the reaction was complete, you'll get about the same amount of glycerin out as the mixture of catalyst that was put in. So recall we put 20 liters of catalyst in. We're looking for approximately 20 liters of glycerin to come out. If anything less than that comes out, we have an incomplete reaction and uh, we may need to further process the oil. But let's hope uh, we get roughly 19 or 20 liters of glycerin off this batch. That would indicate that we're going to have good reactive biodiesel in the, the rest of the the rest of the tank there. So as soon as this starts running clear, we'll know we've hit the biodiesel. All right, getting to the end here of this bucket. You can see the color of the glycerin is starting to lighten up. There's some mixed in biodiesel in there now, so we're starting to hit the biodiesel. You can see it's th much thinner. So I think these are 17 or 18 liters, so that's a fairly complete reaction. There's still some biodiesel mixed in. What, what we'll do is let it settle a little more take small amounts of glycerin off. We'll probably fill this in a little bit more, um, hoping to get at least 19 liters of glycerin off. And then we'll have pure biodiesel remaining in the processor. Okay, now that the glycerin is drained, the next step is to transfer the remaining biodiesel into our finishing tank. We close this valve, which cuts that off, and then we open this valve, which allows the diesel to flow this way under here and come up into the bottom of this tank and fill this tank up. Okay, so that's closed, that's open now, and we can run the pump. It's filling from the bottom. 